You're watching Inside iOS Dev, your favorite show about real-world iOS development. Okay, guys. So today, Sandeep and I are working on some code and trying to pair programming. He's helping me out. I'm trying to add some methods to this view controller that I have, right? I need to implement a new feature. So I've got this view controller. I got a view model for it. I got some other piece of data in that view model that that's going to be used to display in the UI. Okay, let me go ahead and build my new feature and maybe add some method to it. Okay, and then after I coded up my business logic or whatever needs to happen in this button, maybe there's some network request or whatever, I really just want to save it, right, in my view model. And I have a view model in this view controller because I have MVVM type of architecture here, right? So I'm saving the new piece of data that's just imagine it got updated with, with some something else that we computed here. And yeah, so I save, like, I got my new piece of data, I have a view model, so I save the updated data to it, and I'm, I just want to refresh the UI. Yeah, I want to reload everything and display it now. And then, let's see, so some will we'll just mimic that some time, at some point in time, later in time, this gets clicked by the user, right? my new button feature. Okay, so if we run this, let's see what happens. Oh, but look at that. Somehow, it, what's wrong with my code? I actually refreshed the UI and it's supposed to update it only one time, but, but it happened twice. I'm looking at this code, there's nothing wrong with it. What's going on? Yeah. Okay, so Alex, I think there must be some side effect of this statement, piece of data. When you're setting it, you must be calling something on its did oh, set or uh -huh. something. Okay, so you you say side effect. Okay, so let's look at the you know this. There might be some some side effect here when we set it on the view model, right? So let's look at the view model. Oh, well, it doesn't have any side effects, Sandeep. Hmm. Uh, what's what's going on? Hmm. Maybe okay. So here we are changing the piece of data as well. So maybe some did set method on piece of data itself. Well, that doesn't seem like there is one, right? Uh, I'm confused now. I don't know. Yeah, indeed, right? Me too. Well, it, you know, if we spend some time and look around and look through this legacy code of this view controller that maybe neither you or me have written and it was done years ago, we would probably at some point finally find out that, oh, there is a did set callback, right? But it is not upon assignment of this piece of data, a property, right? It's actually upon assignment of the view model property. But how can this be? You and I have never assigned this, right? There is no, we didn't write view model equals new view model right hmm but that's also one of the ways to do that we could have just not called the refresh ui again here i mean that was also fine no but it's, uh, so let's say you mean this right just just keep yeah. this code yeah but then yeah i mean true. That, that is it that is it not called that reactive approach just setting that I'm just changing the data the, and I'm supposed to get the result out of it, right? Well, there is nothing reactive about it, right? There is no, no explicit declaration of any reaction that's supposed to happen in this assignment of data. There is explicit, and, and again, even if it was, it's not reactive really. It's just a setter with some side effects. There is declaration of that here of having a side effect of refreshing the UI upon this assignment. But apparently that's how Swift works, right? Because it's all structs, it does this copy on write thing where even if you set one property on a struct, it will reassign, essentially re recreate, well, this will be a new instance recreated. And then it will regenerate brand new struct on this level and reassign it here, and that will trigger it, right? Hmm. But what if I wanted to ensure that 
the UI needs to be refreshed whenever this view model gets changed. I would definitely prefer did set uh, updating the UI. The problem with this is that you would never know. What if you don't want to do that, right? What if you just want to save a piece of data and then do some other computation later on and then only then refresh UI or maybe don't refresh UI at all because the same button was clicked 20 times over, right? And I don't want to be unnecessarily refreshing the UI. Mm -hmm. This is not a very explicit, even though it's a built-in feature of Swift, this is not a good explicit readable code to, to do that. So right now we can actually browse the code and see this. But what if this was written in a different library and you wouldn't see did set at all? Like you wouldn't even know that the side effect happens. And again, you want, even if you know that the side effect happens, you're not even touching the, this property, right? You're touching something else. How do you even know that this is a struct, right? By reading this piece of code. Uh, and then what if you're code reviewing? In code review, let's say you use GitHub or something like that, right? The most common tool. Same thing. You probably would never even look at this to know, or is this a class or a struct to know that there is a did set callback, which again, you didn't even trigger here. So the alternative to this and the more objective oriented approach, which is more readable in this case, it's cleaner would be to have an explicit method, something like update view model, right? That's one option where you set the new view model, and then you explicitly call refresh UI and you don't have any callback side effects here. You don't use did set, right? This will achieve exactly the same result as we what we had and you will still have updated UI, but now this time it will be called only one time as expected. Or another method, you could argue, okay, well, every time I would have to recreate this view model and all, right? I guess you could have update piece of data. Yeah, this, and then here, yeah, and then you refresh here. Or you could have, as an alternative, you could have Another method that just updates this piece of data, that, because that's really what you did, right? In this original, that, that's the idea of what we were trying to do. We're trying to set just the new data coming in on the view model. And then, but then internal, it will do whatever it needs to do, such as reset the whole view model if it doesn't have mutation methods on it, and then refresh the UI. So this, now you created an internal, not public, but an internal API for your whole view controller class. Every time someone wants to save the piece of data and refresh, well, they use this and refresh the UI, right? They use this method that does both. If you only explicitly want to save the piece of data, well, you can call that, right? Or... Hmm you only explicitly want to refresh the UI, you, you do that instead of having some sneaky behavior with the did set over here. No one even expects to have, right? By judging by reading through the code. Of course, if you, you were the one who written it or you're in, intimately familiar with it, but that's not the case, right? We all work with legacy code. We all work with other people's code. And this Swift feature makes it, encourages you to make it very much not obvious, not explicit, implicit, not straightforward. You have to know so much context of this thing being a struct, for example, right? It, it's too dangerous to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Got it. Shouldn't we just make it as that view more or less private then? Because anyone can just update that view model from outside then we could yes and uh that's yes that's another change here right to to encapsulate the data and would be more objective oriented approach to encapsulate and hide the data access to the data and instead have again perhaps this is not private anymore and instead a public function right that could be called from the outside to do specifically this but since it's not just some sort of a setter, there is no, no one should expect it to only save the data and that's it. 
there is probably more to it, more actions such as refreshing the UI, right? But if you just expose a property like this to public access and then someone else sets it, why in the world any other developer should expect it to do anything else but just save it, the, the piece of data, and that's it without any side effects? That is just mm -hmm. common sense. And unfortunately, Swift is not following it <laughs> or encouraging developers not follow it by allowing something like this. This is a very kind of common scenario. And there's two camps, unfortunately, on this sort of problem issue, whatever you call it. Uh, some people uh, really like following the Swift approach and using all these features that Apple tells them, that gave them with Swift UI, right? And they rely on this did set. And then there is another camp of, I guess, people like me who are taking a more generic approach, more abstracted from the language that they're using and following OOP and similar um, paradigms and ideas and approaches. And yeah, it, it was interesting. So I made a post about this on uh, LinkedIn, very quick and dirty post showing similar example and similar behavior. It was all sparked by me working with a production code base and encountering something like this where I uh, saved a property on a view model, but then unintentional side effects started to happen. And it, was, it took some time to find out why. And we got an interesting discussion here going on, actually, with people commenting different things about oh, how people just follow blindly follow Apple and uh, what, it, what, what Apple says to do, even though it might not be a good idea, such as this example that, that we just covered. Uh, but then, then there is another group of people who say, well, this is all fine and expected because this is how Swift works, right? This is the intentional behavior. And uh, um, a lot of code, like a lot of developers and code bases rely on this, right? To actually propagate changes and all. There are other means of doing it and architecting it or using design patterns for that, in my opinion. But we'll link this kind of, with this post and this thread and in the show notes too, if you guys want to check out and maybe contribute and leave comments as well. What, what do you guys think about did set side effects? Do you use it in your code base? Do you not? Let us know. Leave comments uh, under this video. And yeah, would would love to know that. Subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss the next episode.